I, uh, I work for the government. <laughs> so um, be critical about everything I say. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was asked to um, uh, talk about the open data uh, endpoints uh, we have available, so I'm not going to talk uh, about the air quality as a, a very complex thing. Um, I have 15 minutes, so it's, uh, I mean, air quality is very complex, and, uh, but if uh, anyone has any uh, questions, I'm, uh, I will stay here a bit after the presentation. I'm uh, very keen to discuss. Um, <clears throat> So, yeah, in, in Belgium, uh, uh, everything uh, concerning the environment has been regionalized. Uh, so, uh, we are sort of at, at uh, ESLIN, we are a permanent cooperation agreement because, uh, of course, air uh, moves uh, over linguistic uh, borders and so forth at an alarming pace. So, uh, we need to cooperate anyhow. And uh, so, yeah, there are a couple of uh, uh, sort of, uh, um, uh, well, there are three, three uh, regional networks in, uh, in Belgium. There are a couple of uh, sort of uh, bread and butter thing which, uh, things which we need to do, like like uh, aggregating all the data from the regional networks for the European level. Uh, but yeah, since we have the, all, all that data, we, well, we can we can also start uh, uh, manip manipulating it and uh, and redistributing it and uh, and yeah, for example, continuous uh, uh, forecasts and so forth. Th those are used, for example, for the smog alert or the, the information uh, threshold uh, recent, uh, recent addition to that, uh, that alerting system. Um, and um, yeah, well, we are also responsible for trying to enforce a common scientific basis between the, the, the regional ne uh, monitoring networks. Okay, so just to, to sketch the context, um, well, many of you probably know our website where we uh, try to provide uh, continuous real-time data um, but also, uh, for example, uh, scientific reports on, on air quality uh, section with frequently asked questions about uh, air quality. Um, we, we often get the same, same questions uh, about uh, certain phenomena. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's our communication channel. But besides that, uh, or behind that, that website, we have a whole infrastructure of, of different data services. Um, in general, yeah, we, we always make a distinction between validated data and, uh, and non-validated data. Um, that's, it's, it's very easily done to, to mix the two, and, uh, but it's uh, well, a dreaded thing to mix the two. They should be <laughs> kept clean. Uh, so our, uh, our solution to that is to, uh, to have two, two separate, separate uh, databases. Um, but yeah, on top of that, we have a, a service layer of viewing services like a WMS uh, web map service or otherwise uh, more downloading-oriented uh, 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 services like a WFS, a feature service, uh, uh, CS, the, 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 the coverage service, and an SOS, a sensor observation service, a, net, a REST API for, for fast uh, uh, um, access to, to time series data and so forth. Uh, okay. Um, there is documentation there, maybe, maybe not, uh, um, well, uh, well if, if there's something missing, please, please uh, send us a mail and we, uh, we will try to, uh, to, uh, to include it. Um, uh, we do, do our best to do, document it all, but of course, yeah, time is limited, and um, yeah, uh, we don't have a huge team, so <laughs> we do the best we can. Um, the sense observation service, yeah, that's something to, to really, well, this is sort of a standard to, to, uh, to exchange uh, time series data. Um, it is a bit cumbersome at, uh, at times because uh, yeah, XML, and uh, so you have a lot of overhead of, uh, of, of, of a lot of uh, uh, little, little signs and so forth which you really don't know. It's, it's also a bit more difficult to, to parse into some other system. Hence, we, we, we looked more in, um, at, at the REST API. Of, well, it's, it's part of, part of that service, actually, um, which is a lot easier, which provides JSON, uh, which is a lot easier to, to, to integrate into other uh, Infrastructures, uh, Leuven Air, for example, does that on a on a regular ba uh, well, uh, on a continuous basis. Um, yeah, that uh, creates an environment where you can collaborate uh, more easily. The REST API has sort of yeah, standard standard queries uh, like uh, give me all the stations, uh, uh, a specific time series. But you can also search on uh, certain certain uh, well search for, for for a station or uh, or, or a phenomena or. Uh, well, yeah, phenomena is a pollutant in uh, in, uh, in sensor web enablement uh, lingo, uh, and it's the same thing. 
So uh, a phenomena can also be temperature, of course, or wind direction, or uh, something else which you need in a, in a calculation around air quality. There is, well, something we heavily use is, uh, is the, the, the open air package for, for R. Um, R is something uh, extremely handy to us uh, for, 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 for uh, advanced uh, uh, sort of analysis of, uh, of the data. It is, uh, well, if you, if you do it right, it's pretty fast, and, um, but it's, it's very flexible, and, uh, and especially the nice thing is you can make uh, shiny apps and share your results. And uh, so even someone who doesn't know anything about R can... Uh, can uh, enjoy uh, uh, playing with, with different uh, uh, parameters and so forth. Um, yeah, you, well, that's maybe a bit too much into detail. You can, you can also integrate uh, other uh, REST APIs into uh, your own stack. So, I mean, from, from a, s a s system architecture, this is actually an, uh, an interesting example for if you want to uh, advance Luftdaten a bit further. At the moment, you can, you can only get, get the last five values uh, from, from Luftdaten, and besides that, you have, a, have an archive of uh, Luftdaten. Uh, but if you want, want to get a, a longer time series, for example, it's, it's a bit uh, awkward. Uh, so it's maybe, a, maybe an interesting uh, uh, thing, thing to think about. Um, yeah, just some examples of, of shiny apps, uh, pollution roses, for example, and of course, uh, depending on the wind direction, your, your, uh, uh, the impact of, uh, of your concentrations at a given place uh, will be different. Um, that can be calculated uh, uh, as long as you have uh, wind direction and wind speed. Uh, um, yeah, so just some examples. Actually, I mean, there are... Um, uh, so many possibilities uh, within that, uh, as soon as you, you get your data into R. Um, so, some documentation if you want to have a look at this. Um, yeah, we also have a, a mobile app, well, the, well the, the, the previous older versions maybe not, does not feel that, that much, uh, well, uh, that native, so, uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, the concept of, was especially to have some some open source co code which can be reused for for other purposes uh, easily um, and well that that wasn't in any case uh, uh, achieved and uh, but we are working on a new version based on ionic uh, which feels a lot more, more native and uh, so uh, yeah uh, but same philosophy try to develop some 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 open source base code which can be reused for for different purposes uh, so feel free to uh, to uh, uh, adapt it any way you want, um, and yeah, then of course you have straight away a, a sort of a framework where you can um, uh, easily integrate other uh, well our, our open data in any case uh, or other other uh, external open data if you want to to have a look at it in context. The high resolution models uh, we do um, well these are still um, annual means. So don't worry, it's probably much better at the moment uh, outside. Um, uh, so what is inside there? You have a, a, a lower resolution background uh, model using Corine land cover actually to, to, uh, to make an, inter, uh, uh, an intelligent interpolation uh, using land, land use classes to, to uh, uh, just to, to, to put it simply, if you have a measuring station and to the east you have uh, industry and to the west you have a big forest, you can uh, expect the air quality to be different uh, according to, uh, to, uh, to, to the land cover. Um, and that's, that's what that, that model does. But uh, that's a 4 by 4 kilometer grid. Well, we also have a, a way of, of, of uh, getting, uh, scaling it down to, to 1 by 1 kilometer grid, but actually it does not improve the data that much. So. To improve it, you need uh, emission inventories. Uh, that's a very hot uh, topic, and uh, um, well, um, we used to have very good uh, emission inventories as input, but uh, you see more and more with uh, austerity, 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 that the first thing uh, uh, that gets scrapped at, uh, at government agencies are the most interesting things. Um, <laughs> no, oh, maybe. <laughs> Um, so, uh, uh, also, also counting uh, uh, um, the, the, the streams of, 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 of traffic uh, was also regionalized, so uh, we used to have a very good uh, federal uh, inventory of, uh, of, of uh, um, uh, well, traffic counts. There was a, uh, well, a huge network, and, um, but yeah, somebody uh, uh, left for his pension, and, uh, and after that no one picked it up. Um, uh, but then, you, well, in, 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 then, then the three regions started uh, evolving totally differently. Um, yeah, and now, now even the the, the, the region that, that that had well the most advanced system is also stopping with the counting. Anyway, we are working on that that problem, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 
it's not easy, and it's, but it's, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, without emissions, and with, with uh, it, it's really, I mean, all, all uh, environmental inter uh, impact assessments about changes to, to mobility become uh, an intelligent guess, uh, at best, if you don't know where, where cars are driving. If you want to know the effect of uh, changes in, in, in circulation in, in towns at the moment, uh, you need, well, the, the most accurate way to, to uh, estimate that impact is via emission uh, inventories because measurement, uh, the problem with measurements, I mean, it's, it's of course an, uh, an interesting idea, even if you have good quality measurements, the problem is the one year is not the other. Uh, you might, might be measuring the differences in uh, meteorological uh, conditions uh, between the one year and the next. Um, and, uh, and, and you cannot really, uh, really uh, um, substantiate the claim that there was an impact, negative or positive, of a certain, certain, uh, uh, certain change in, uh, in, in the mobility in a, in a town. Um, but, uh, so, we uh, also now have a, a, a real-time version of the, um, the, the high-resolution maps. We also do uh, population exposure calculations uh, there, together with that, based on that. We do it this way, <laughs> uh, so uh, you see a one by one kilometer grid of uh, of, uh, of population, uh, which may be may seem uh, uh, of a much too low uh, resolution, but uh, we we compared it with with uh, with uh, um, uh, data on address uh, level, and actually the difference is not that that big. Um, this is actually well. Uh, well, another reason is that this is this is a, a data set which we where, where we have the same data for the whole country. That's uh, that's also a reason why we, we prefer to use that data set. But uh, for 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 areas where we have uh, better data, the difference is not that that big. Um, there, there is a is a certain scale where it doesn't matter that much anymore whether you really do it on a on a person by person basis. I mean, of course, for a person it makes a huge difference eh? whether you you yourself do do a certain uh, 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 take a certain route, uh, yes or no. That for you it makes a difference, but statistically on a, on a whole population that ever it is averaged out, it doesn't really make, make that much of a, dis, uh, a difference anymore whether you do it. Uh, on a, on a, do your calculation on an individual basis. It just takes a lot longer to calculate. <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, as a part of that, we, the, the web coverage service, the nice thing there is that you can do uh, both a trim and a slice, as they call it in, um, in, um, in the jargon. Um, so you can get a time series out of it, uh, or otherwise you can get a, get 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 one 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 hour out of it, and that is that uh, makes it useful also to, for example, to uh, to to use together with with low cost uh, sensor results to, to 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 have a look what is actually happening. But it, you can also, uh, for example, start uh, calculating uh, the healthiest route, um, and that's that's something we are now currently working on. Um, to, to make that more user friendly, I mean, it's, at the moment it is possible to do that uh, already. Uh, within within hour, we already achieved this uh, to, to pull the data in from from the WCS and, and do the calculation and uh, uh, come to a result. But it's, um, it needs needs some uh, some smoothing and some some more documentation and so forth. Um, yeah, citizen sciences uh, initiatives. Uh, we really want to uh, um, engage, and um, that's not not only on the Belgium level. Also, for example, the JRC is very, very active in that. Um, I don't know if you, you are aware of the, the Air Sensor uh, uh, website and also yeah, what's, what's, what's uh, connected to that. A lot of information about uh, pitfalls of measure, measuring and so forth. Uh, uh, they did a lot of uh, t uh, testing of, of um, especially gas sensors uh, until now. But um, yeah, it's very clear that you, you, you often have a, well, the big struggle is, is uh, the interference of, of ozone with, with, uh, with NO2, uh, because they have a, um, a signature, to, well, a similar, similar response uh, signature, um, very difficult to, to take out, so especially in, in, in sort of the intermediate periods, as we call them, in the, in the autumn and in the spring, where you already have high levels of ozone, uh, but also still maybe some temperature inversion and so forth, uh, that, that, that the NO2 remains close to the ground. Uh, your your results will differ significantly, um, but yeah, some some well I interesting sensors which we discovered. Uh, for example, the Vincent uh, uh, ZH zero uh, zero three A. Um, uh, well, also the the, the SDS zero uh, eleven from uh, used by Luftart and and eleven air and so forth. They they have they have pretty usable uh, results. Uh, there are certainly some 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 pitfalls. 
But uh, it's it's becoming interesting, uh, and um, and so it's certainly also the the, the, the data infrastructure uh, approach of Lyft Daten, uh, really uh, very good. Um, so, um, but <laughs> so Thursday, Thursday night, um, uh, this is what you were measuring uh, within uh, Leuven Air. <laughs> All is all is good. Yeah? <laughs> now, now we add uh, the stations of uh, from 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 the from the regional networks uh, from us, um, and this is actually what the situation was. Um, and uh, so, if for for people that uh, think that gov the government is trying to hide something, uh, no, it's not. It's not that. It is. It is. A, it is more a thing of. Uh, 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 accepting the fact that measuring air quality is a difficult uh, thing. And um, so, yeah, uh, to uh, jump into the discussion about moving around with a sensor or otherwise having a sensor station, stationary, I mean, that's one thing of, of, of achieving a good, good uh, uh, measurement quality. That's already a, st a struggle. But as soon as you start moving around with your sensor, you enter into a totally different uh, realm of, of, of complexity. Um, so, uh, well, to give you an example, if you, if you have a sensor stationary and sometimes the, me uh, the, the sensor measures a little bit too much, a little bit too low, by aggregating the data to, from, from, from uh, know, every five seconds to, to uh, every 10 minutes or to uh, every half hour or so, you already correct uh, a lot of the, the measure measurement of uncertainty because sometimes you are too high, sometimes you are too low. That's one thing. Um, but the fact that you are moving around, you, you, you think that you are then measuring uh, an extremely high concentration in this street, but yeah, actually uh, what you didn't see was that the truck was, uh, was passing just a little bit earlier, and after that you don't have any traffic anymore. Yeah? So in, in, on, on a daily average, maybe the, the air quality in this street is much better than it is uh, where I live, uh, because the neighbors are all uh, burning, uh, burning wood to, to heat their houses at the moment. So um, it's really... Uh, uh, you enter into a different, different, uh, different complexity. Um, I'm not saying that that uh, citizen science measurements are, are 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 not useful also for us. For example, I mean, uh, look at the Curieuse Neuse project. There, there we are really uh, uh, getting data out. Uh, it's maybe not as sexy because it's uh, it's a passive sampler. It's a, it's a permeation tube. It's a, it's a technology from uh, from from back uh, the, from the old days. It has been around for the last 30 years and so forth. You don't. You can't do it in real time, and it's not going to be. Uh, you can't uh, label it as uh, Internet of Things or something. Um, so uh, it's, uh, but it does produce robust results. You get a get a uh, a monthly average which you can trust, and uh, we can use it to refine our uh, high resolution uh, uh, models, which give you, of course, no idea about some event like uh, there's a traffic jam in, uh, in in a street canyon or whatnot. That, of course, we cannot predict, but uh, if we would have access to the, the traffic data in real time, we could, but that is something which is totally privatized uh, now. Uh, Tom, Tom and, uh, and Google and so forth, they charge huge, huge amounts of uh, money uh, if you want to access that data. And um, so it's, yeah, and also they all have their pitfalls. So it's, uh, uh, there, it's, it's a thing of, yeah, we don't have access to the, to the right data um, to, to really integrate it into models. Um, let me, yeah, so uh, besides the problem, so the, the problem Thursday night, um, I mean, I want to be fair to you, to you on Friday night, for example, uh, the problem was not, not there anymore, that you were measuring more or less the same, same thing. Yeah? Um, so yeah, Thursday night was very dry in the air. Uh, it's, a, it's a known, known, known issue with low-cost sensors. Um, yeah, are there maybe possibilities to, to, uh, to correct for this? Um, we need to investigate. It's, it's uh, maybe uh, for, for, the, for the high relative humidity. I know it's, it's, it's a lot more complex to, to correct, but um, low, low relative humidity is maybe easier. Anyway, um, so I mean, that's, that's something, that's, that's a field uh, where, where a lot of innovation is still possible. Um, and and is, it is especially by, by opening up, well, having, having open data services that, uh, that, that we can look at this together. Yeah, it's not a thing of, of pointing fingers or whatever, uh, saying that uh, the one or other is, uh, is better or, uh, or worse. You can do things which we cannot do, and uh, we can do things which you can't do. <laughs> uh, simply put. Um, so yeah, I talked about the, the, the problem of the gas, gas sensors. Uh, so yeah, there are NO2. Um, even if we did manage to, to get to levels which are okay with the European uh, uh, um, directives, um, in, the, in the intermediate se season, NO2 is still uh, an issue. Uh, 
we don't really have a, I mean, the best, best uh, local census are probably the, the alpha sense census. Um, it's about 20 euros per, per sensor, but then you still need to integrate it into a shield uh, and so forth. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not impossible. I mean, you, you, certainly for, for uh, winter and, and summer periods, you get a, well, summer periods actually, yeah, well, it's, it's, then, then uh, there's, of course, always too much ozone. So, um, um, yeah, but in, in, in typical uh, real winter situations, it's maybe, maybe also uh, um, possible. Um, so, yeah, um, that's, I think I said everything which is on this slide. Um, I want to, yeah, to close off, uh, attract your attention to a couple of uh, European projects uh, we are busy with. with. European projects for government agencies are sort of uh, the, the way to still do a little bit of innovation, uh, even if budgets are cut. Um, so uh, there is the Be Good <laughs> project where we are uh, well, developing the healthiest route uh, API further. Um, so at the end, there should be some, some API which can be integrated into any, any routing uh, application. It's not that we are calculating the routes ourselves. No, it's, it's more uh, evaluating a route which we get from, uh, from the one or other app. But uh, it needs to be fast enough, of course, and, uh, and so forth, and accessible and well, well documented and, uh, and so forth. There's the Corona EU uh, project where we, we try to um, make our uh, uh, open data endpoints more user-friendly. So uh, uh, comments there are also uh, very welcome. Um, uh, yeah, also uh, viewers for comparing data which you collected, for example, with, with reference uh, data. But I, I don't think that, that that is really a, much, a, a big big issue anymore because you also have your own uh, own way of of, of of pulling the data in into your systems. Anyway, uh, but still, we could, could still look for for synergies. Um, um, yeah, within vacuums, we also. Uh, Evaluating a short list of uh, sensors, the SDS011 is also in that evaluation. Um, uh, it will uh, will be as long as we can, uh, probably a year year uh, long worth of, uh, of of data. But that will be in in and in, in Antwerp. In Antwerp. But the interesting thing would be uh, if you have your sensors that are close to 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 Ukel, uh, It's a different uh, 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 PM measurement uh, method there. It's TOM FDMS, where, where you have a little uh, vibrating thing which uh, uh, measures the mass. Whereas uh, in, um, in, uh, in in Antwerp, you have uh, uh, the, the feeders, which is actually also a, a particulate count. So you, you, you count the number of particulates, which is the same uh, me me measurement uh, technique as the SCS uh, 011. Uh, so an optical method, but a bigger device. And uh, so it's a similar, similar uh, measuring uh, uh, technique. So the, the, the comparison would be really interesting to see whether uh, you have a different, different agreement because particle mass is one of the most difficult uh, uh, parameters to, to measure. There, uh, there are always, I mean, I, I could talk about uh, comparison, long-term comparisons between the, the, uh, the, the British network and the German network where, where you had uh, uh, differences of 60% of, of between measure, uh, reference uh, monitors next to each other. Yeah? So that's just to, I mean, can, can we not say anything about PM? No, we can say something about PM, but still keep that in mind. It is, even with big devices, uh, PM is, 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 is a very difficult uh, uh, parameter. Now, PM 2.5 is probably the best, uh, best uh, uh, fraction to take. Why? Because as soon as a particle is bigger than 2.5, uh, if, if you do your conversion, uh, well, if, if there are slight, slight uh, inaccuracies in your, your conversion, it has a much bigger impact because every particle is bigger. So it has also a bigger impact on the mass you calculate, of course. Whereas in the, in the, actually, the actually, the, the SDS uh, 011 will, will measure typically uh, uh, the range between one micrometer and uh, 2.5. Uh, they, they, they have a, 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 have a low, lower, lower threshold, of course, of, uh, of the sizes which they can actually uh, uh, um, observe or, or measure. Um, uh, within that range, it doesn't, uh, the, 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 the particle number gives you a good, good, uh, good indication about the mass. So that's, hence, uh, they are actually performing pretty, pretty well. So, um, in these, these projects, everything is uh, developed the open source way. So let's uh, look for synergies. And uh, we are not here to take over, but uh, <laughs> we are here to support and facilitate. And uh, so, for example, also with uh, Luftdaten, we are seriously uh, um, 
well, looking at the, the, the possibility to rather invest in, in, in their infrastructure to improve that, then it becomes a, a totally government independent uh, citizen uh, project, but we just financially support to, to, uh, to, to include uh, certain tech technological uh, deficiencies we observe at the moment uh, to, uh, to improve it to, uh, to a level that it can be useful for us, uh, for us and useful for you. There we go. Thanks for your attention. Uh, thank you, Olaf. Uh, it's really nice that you say things as they are, and I think they're also very much in line. Hey, can you maybe stay two, two seconds? No, I'm going to ask for constructive <laughs> questions. Um, is there any question for Olaf or any comments? Yeah. If I have one question, so thank you for the presentation. Uh, you spoke a little bit about the data in Belgium as you are uh, representing the administration. What are your relations with the neighbor countries? Do you have some uh, network of yep. to exchange the data because the air is not stopping at the, at the borders? That is correct, yeah. <laughs> to, to give you an idea, 60% uh, of the air that, that uh, uh, is measured here is actually from, 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 from outside of Belgium. But at, uh, at the same time, we are still netto exporters of, of uh, bad air. Yeah? So there's a lot of exchange. And uh, that's uh, indeed also in, in smoke, smoke episodes always uh, uh, an issue also for us to see what, what is actually coming from uh, especially uh, continental wind and so forth. Uh, we, well, there are um, yeah, very, very active uh, European uh, networks, uh, export networks we, we meet on a, on, a, on a regular basis. Uh, with some countries we have a better relation than, than others. Um, but yeah, also because of proximity, but, uh, uh, but there is a lot of exchange. Uh, the, there is in, in other, other countries, uh, but this is changing. Um, there used to be well, a lot, of, lot more reluctance to, to, to uh, provide access to, to non-validated data as a legal thing and so forth. Yeah, and well, I mean, uh, the, our, our approach to that was always uh, publish that data with a disclaimer saying this has not been validated, problem solved. But uh, that doesn't stick in Germany, for example. Um, uh, but uh, in general, I mean, there's a lot of exchange on, on uh, how we, we engage. Uh, I mean, also uh, the, 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 the Joint Research Center from the, from the Commission is also very active on, on, on these things. Um, the Commission is also, uh, well, for example, jumping on, on Curieuse and Oeuse now, uh, uh, looking to see how they, 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 we, we can engage and, and, and use that as an exa example for, for other European countries. Um, uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, uh, uh, we are always a bit ahead of the pack um, uh, because air quality is, of course, we, we are living in one of the, the big hotspots, but still our air quality is, 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 is certainly better than, uh, than the Po Valley in the, the north of, uh, of Italy, to give you an idea, and certainly better than uh, in Poland. But now I will stop uh, measuring, uh, mentioning names. Um, but, uh, but I mean, that's, that's well known. I mean, you have these three, three uh, big, big areas, and, but also our hotspot actually extends to, to, to the Ruhrgebiet in, in Germany, so it's sort of one, one big, big agglomeration. But, uh, so yeah, especially with the Netherlands, we have a very, very active uh, uh, contact. Uh, uh, well, they are part of uh, two of the projects I talked about. And, and, and often these European projects are also a way to, to collaborate, get to know each other, and, uh, and exchange uh, know-how. So yeah, there is a lot of collaboration, yeah. Uh, satellite uh, Sentinel, Sentinel 5 dedicated yeah. to air quality. Can we expect more accurate data also from this kind of uh, far? But uh, no. I don't know how pre precise is it, yeah. it is. Yeah. And, uh, and can we expect high resolution uh, information from yeah. this kind of tools? Yeah, um, not high resolution, but um, uh, well, I, uh, in the past week I, uh, I saw a presentation from someone uh, working with Tropomi, which looked very interesting. Um, so there is certainly progress, but uh, you still you still have the, the fundamental problem, of course, that uh, there is cloud cover. You cannot always use the data. So so whatever ever way you you want to. Uh, uh, well, whatever approach you use to, to, to use that data, you will always need to uh, have a backup uh, to, to calculate it some, some, some other way. That's one issue. The cloud cover is not to be under underestimated because there are many, many, many uh, uh, eye pollution uh, episodes where everything is covered, and that's especially the reason why 
the pollution is at the level it is, uh, because it makes us breathe our own uh, rubbish. <laughs> so, um, uh, but, uh, and then another, another thing is that, of course, uh, a, a satellite measures the whole column. Uh, you need some strategy to, to uh, estimate the, the, uh, the levels uh, we are actually breathing, which uh, might be very, very different. Uh, big plumes uh, have a huge impact at a higher, higher level uh, coming out of a chimney from uh, 80 meters high or something. And, uh, uh, but, but actually, they have little impact uh, on, on the vicinity. It can come down, of course, and their, their satellite uh, data is, again, very interesting. Uh, what I see uh, most inter interesting about satellite data is maybe to, uh, to improve um, uh, our knowledge about long-range long range, uh, 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 import-export, uh, but, but also to, to, to train forecast models, uh, uh, to use in forecast models, because you, you have a better idea of what, 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 uh, what is actually being imp Im imported. But for, for local air quality, my personal opinion is that the high-resolution uh, maps are the best, uh, best option. Uh, maybe in combi combination with uh, uh, with local sensors, and uh, local sensors are especially good, of course, to uh, to identify hotspots. So uh, that's, that's certainly an interesting uh, uh, synergy. But you will always need uh, a, a measuring network of of, of stationary, uh, uh, high quality, uh, uh, accurate uh, uh, measurements, which you can uh, use as a backup and use as a as a calibration tool and so forth. Yeah. Thank you, Olaf. Um, yeah, um, yeah, we are already okay. If you don't mind to have lunch at one instead of half past twelve, it's fine with me. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Answer quick. Uh, okay, well, it was a kind of a triple question. But um, <laughs> for, for, firstly, how many high quality sensors do you have in the Brussels region, and where are they? <clears throat> there, there are nine nine measuring stations in Brussels in the Brussels region, and if I'm uh, not mistaken, out of my out of my head, out of the top of my head, they don't all measure all the all the pollutants, but uh, most of them uh, sort of. Yeah, there are a couple of uh, super sites if you want, like Wollenbeek has actually pretty much all, all the parameters, uh, and others are maybe a bit more limited uh, in what they measure, but uh, NO2, for example, is measured in every, every measuring station. NO2 is an interesting proxy parameter for traffic emissions, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, they are also, of course, uh, PM is, of course, well, it's more more detrimental to, uh, to your health. Now, that's, I mean, it's also still still up for to, uh, up for debates. Uh, what what the what the big uh, big issues? But to give you an idea, yeah, there are nine nine stations in, in Brussels, but there are about uh, what eighty sta stations in Belgium, and also the stations outside of Brussels uh, are uh, produce uh, useful uh, data for Brussels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Secondly, uh, how well does uh, do other polluants correlate with PM two point five? Which is to say, if you have uh, PM 2.5 reading for this building. Uh, to what extent will you be able to deduce NO2 or, or ozone? Or uh... it d depends on what what pollution um, is uh, is close by. So uh, it's something which is very important in uh, when when you measure is to think about the representativeness of your measurement. Uh, uh, is it representative for your garden situation? Is it uh, representative for a street canyon situation? Uh, so it, it de de depends on the surrounding, I would mm -hmm. say. But uh, so uh, to give you an idea, uh, traffic uh, uh, particle uh, um, uh, emissions they they generally uh, uh, are more noticeable in your PM 2.5 than in PM 10 because uh, they are mostly smaller. Uh, PM 2.5 is also not bad for uh, wood, wood combustion, for example, because those are also the smaller smaller particles. But it will miss quite a lot of the wood, wood combustion because wood combustion is really even even smaller. So there, you would would rather uh, uh, look at black carbon uh, as a measuring uh, me measuring method. But uh, black carbon, there are different ways of measuring black carbon, uh, different frequencies. You have a better better response. At, uh, at frequencies uh, which are, for example, not measured by the, the AE53, uh, uh, the little device uh, uh, you were, were talking about, uh, because th those devices have been uh, developed for, for traffic emissions. Uh, for that, you need a bigger device, the AE33, which measures on, uh, on uh, seven wavelengths, and, and, and then, then you have a formula to, to deduce your, your Woodburn uh, uh, part out of that. But mm -hmm. as I say, uh, in terms of mass, the contribution of Woodburn is pretty uh, low, even if we uh, come to 50% of the, the PM 2.5 during winter winter periods, which is a lot, but um, uh, it, it 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 has a bigger bigger impact on black carbon. 
there you would then have huge, you know, 80% uh, wood burn and so forth. So and finally, uh, what was the improvement that you would like, you would most like to finance in the Lift Arts and Network? Um, maybe the, the data infrastructure, because I feel that it is at a level, level that, is, uh, that is really, well, the, the, the approach is, is, is very interesting that was uh, uh, chosen. Well, I, mean, I mentioned the S and SIR um, uh, project. There, the shield is pretty expensive, um, and, and that is something which Luftdaten uh, uh, solves brilliantly by, by doing, uh, using Wi-Fi networks. But yeah, of course, in certain situations, you would also need a, uh, an extension with a GPRS uh, 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 receiver, for example, to, 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 or yeah, the other, other possibility, I'm, I'm not, not aware, it's the first time I hear of it, well, like, yeah, Franz already mentioned that, the... Um, the Laurent. Laurent, that's right, there we Thank go. You. So I'm very interested to, to learn about that. <laughs>